Now comes the fungi. The fungi are eukaryotic. Here comes a eukaryotic organisms. The bacteria and the archaea are the prokaryotic. Meaning they have no true nucleus, but the fungi actually has true nucleus. And the true nucleus means it is well protected. Means just as we say we have a well built house, not just made from some sticks or from nothing. We call it a home in the same the genetic material nucleus a home of a genetic material if it is built strongly then the organism actually turns to the eukaryote now the eukaryote cells can be unicellular or can be multicellular fungi actually has both the unicellular cells in the fungi are called yeast while the multicellular are called moles and mushrooms. Actually, just moles, but mushroom is actually very different, so we have to name it separately. Now, how do fungi live? It absorbs nutrients. The example, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. This is a pretty common example, and I think everyone will, will be familiar with who cooks. Who cooks or know how to cook in their home. And the yeast that we use is actually a living organism, a living, you know, fungi. That actually goes into our food, and then by food I mean dough made from flour. The carbohydrates in that dough is converted or is a byproduct produced carbon dioxide, which actually fluff our dough and we can make buns from it or bread from it. It is actually a saccharomyces service. It is a yeast and also known as baker's yeast. Means it's actually very common in bakery, so the name got baker's yeast. So coming to the structure of the fungi, the first one is the single cell yeast. The diagram and uh, these are yeast actually. These are the single cell organisms. But when you look at the other one, this is actually the fungi known as molds the mushroom is also the fungi that we can see with the naked eye 